What's up everybody, welcome back. So, what you see here is actually a Rene Pierre table. I bought it from a lady down in Atlanta, uh, got a really good deal on it, but it needs a ton of work. Um, they're very similar to Bonzini tables, which is awesome. So I wanted to get this so that I could kind of get better at a decent price. Uh, at Bonzini Play. I'm very close to North Carolina now, and they play a lot of Bonzini there. Uh, I think it'd be super fun to go over there and try and compete with those guys, so that's why I got this. The problem is, it's not in very good shape. So I'm going to try and clean it up. I'm gonna try and make it very playable, very usable. We played it on a little bit the other night, uh, me and a few of the locals. Uh, and it's just obvious that there's some parts and aspects that need fixing. Uh, one of which, and I'll show you this, this was one of the handles. Yeah, that's duct tape. So this is actually one of the old 71 competition tables. It's got the 15 millimeter rods. That means all the parts for this are like impossible to find. You, you can't go to Rene Pierre and just order parts. Uh, if it was the 14 mil, I could, but this is one of the old, what they call blue tops. And it has so much stuff that needs to be done, but it's such an old, cool table. I'm personally really excited to get it cleaned up. So the first step, you know, I, I did a couple small things. Um, like you can even see here, guys, check this out. They had these on here to keep the table in two halves. So I've got a lot of work to do. But, and I'm not gonna show you guys everything, but I'm gonna show you a lot and as much as I can. This is probably gonna have me in a bunch of different shirts doing a bunch of different things. But step one, I'm gonna take these rods off and get them as clean as humanly possible. Some of these handles won't even come off and they're supposed to like screw on. So much work. But I want to show you guys some bits and pieces of it. Let's just get to work and let me show you the restoration that I'm going to do, the basic easy way to clean up this old 71 Rene Pierre and make it play as much like a Bonzini as possible. Continue on. So the Rene Pierre, I've, I've kind of got it done for the most part. A um, couple little things I'm gonna I'm gonna finish up on, but I want to show you a little bit of the progress here. I know I'm not gonna show you everything. There was just too much, but the, the key stuff I'm gonna kind of try and show you guys. Like the handles that we had were really bad, so I actually 3D printed these and I, I made them to match on the blue side as well. Um, and I think they're working really really well uh, with a wrap on them. They they play good. 
so I can't really complain. Boy, this thing's been a big project. I gotta tell you what. Um, the, the internal lock for the table didn't work, so I had to kind of makeshift these little guys. Uh, I'm gonna replace these with like an S hook or something so that they're not just hanging out here. But that was the only way that I could get the table to stay down. Now, if we go to the other side of the table, I had to go and what are, buy what are called flag hinges. They had just some really crappy hinges on here, and then I had to add flag hinges. They're very similar to the Tornado flag hinges. Uh, if I could do it over again, I'd get a little bit larger size probably, something a little bit more forgiving, because uh, I had to put these right on the edge, and I'm not the biggest fan of them, uh, so that might be an upgrade I do later, as well as I had to make the scorekeepers, uh, again, 3D printed, these guys right here. Uh, these scorekeepers are all 3D printed by me, uh, including this. I buy this little metal rod at uh, Home Depot. Uh, I'd like a little bit larger, thicker one, but for now it will do as well. And it keeps the, um, keeps them, keeps score. But uh, other than that, guys, not a lot I did, right? Well, I think I already said I removed the giant sticker. That was a nightmare. That was horrible. But this has been like a week-long project for me. I really have enjoyed it. You know, I've only got to do a little bit of time, but now the rods, they play really good. Um, I don't know, I, th I think it's cool. I think it's, it's a fun table, and I've got a lot of little things to still do with it. I, I think I wanna replace the surface, but that's a really big project to undertake for me. And I don't think I'm gonna do it. I think I'm gonna keep this as, as original as possible, because I don't wanna sink a bunch of money into this. Uh, I want it to be just a fun table to come and play on and get as close to Bonzini as possible without going crazy. Um, so yeah, I, the last thing I think I'm going to do is replace these screws. Uh, all these screws are really kind of rusty and gross and uh, that's probably the last thing I'm gonna do is replace all of those with, uh, with just a different screw. It's, it's, it's a pretty easy thing, there's nothing crazy there, um, but they're all starting to strip and get a little gross. And um, I think that'll be the majority of it. The biggest thing was cleaning out the rods. They, amount of gunk, and I mean chunks of it, were in there blocking these rods up. And now it's, it's very playable. I, I think it, it's as playable as I can make it without going crazy, crazy. But uh, we're gonna go and I'm gonna show you a little bit of me just playing around on the table, putzing around, having a little bit of fun with it. Um, and hopefully I'll get some gameplay going here before too long with other locals. Um, you know, I've replaced pretty much everything that I can on here, done as much as I can. Um, the only last piece, I guess, is I've ordered a Bonzini piece for right, for right here. As you can see, there's like a, a piece that goes against the wall here. And I ordered the Bonzini version to see if it'll fit. And hopefully it will. Let's jump on the table, let me show you a few things. I think it'll be fun. so much for watching this episode uh, there's a couple things you know I, I obviously couldn't show you everything I removed the giant sticker and scrubbed that thing for like two hours uh, to get all the residue off of there um, little things like that I didn't want to show you guys it's kind of boring uh, what I did do is I cleaned out pretty much all the rods with my 12 gauge shotgun cleaning tool uh, I used that pretty rigorously throughout all of the rods to get all the gunk out of there from 
my guess is 30 something years worth of just gunk. And it's been pretty gnarly. There, there's a couple last things uh, that I'm gonna work on. I, I actually did uh, also make this little knob here. That knob is um, to pull the balls out. And I think it works rather well. I 3D printed that as well. Uh, like, you, like I already told you guys, the handles are pretty cool. But uh, you know, nothing too crazy. Uh, I feel like there's a couple issues with the table. Obviously a few of the rods are bent. Uh, I'm gonna have to work on that a little bit. I, I found a, a jig that they're using online uh, to straighten out the rods. So I'm gonna try and build one of those. You probably won't see it, I won't lie, because that's just craziness. But that's what I'm gonna try and do. And a couple last things with the table. Um, but, you know, Bonzini balls. I'm gonna get some cork balls as well, just for fun. But it, it's meant to get a little bit better on and play a different style of foosball. So I don't think it's ever gonna be close to a Bonzini. It's just not gonna get there. It's not that type of table. But something different to play on? Yeah, yeah, I think it's gonna be super fun and I think it's great. So there's that. Uh, before we sign off on the video, this right here uh, is what I've been making a lot of. These are for tournaments. You use them as timeout keepers. Uh, I think I've showed you guys, and I'll take you over here. This right here is what I use currently on my home table. I've printed those. But what you don't have when you go to a tournament are those. So I've designed this, uh, and I want to show you guys something. It, it goes over the top. People have tried to go this way with it. It doesn't work. You go over the top. So whenever you're at a tournament, you can have this on the table. It doesn't get in the way. Um, and you can adjust, obviously, to take care, keep track of your timeouts. One is black, one is yellow for these little guys, so you always know which team is which, uh, so there's no confusion there. So this is available on eBay. Uh, guys, I sell these for $10. That is shipped to your door, so you're actually getting a pretty good deal when it comes to the shipping aspect. So there's that. So I hope you guys check this out. There will be a link down below if you would like to get your own timeout keeper. Other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching. I know I didn't show everything that I really wanted to, but it was grueling and painstaking for a lot of it. And I'm sure I'll find little bits and pieces that we'll need to go over with over the times that we have it. Uh, right now, most of it is really just cleaning up the rods more and more and kind of figuring out the best way to keep them clean all the time because it's impossible to get all the gunk out of them that's in there, right now at least and I'm constantly kind of working my way through getting more and more of the gunk out. So hopefully we'll get there. Thank you guys so much for watching. And until next time, happy foozing.